Welcome, this is Joe Forward of the State Bar of Wisconsin, and we are continuing the discussion about landlord tenant laws and the current uh, eviction moratoriums in place. I'm here now with Mitch. Mitch is a clinical uh, law professor at UW Law School. He's also the supervisor and director of the Neighborhood Law Clinic at the UW Law School. Um, and they deal with a lot with evictions and tenant side um, representation. Mitch, welcome, how you doing? I'm doing okay, Joe, how are you? Great. Um, so Mitch, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on, on the tenant, from the tenant's perspective with the eviction moratoriums? Right, so, um, you know, rental housing law, uh, as far as a lawyer's role, oftentimes um, comes down to sort of three big areas. One is evictions, um, another is sort of security deposits, and a third is, is, is conditions, um, sort of um, maintenance and other conditions of habitability related. Um, with the CDC eviction moratorium um, being in place since September and now extended through the end of January, um, there's been very few uh, evictions. Um, certainly relative to the normal number of evictions. Um, the CDC eviction moratorium was not a full bar on evictions. Evictions can still happen. Um, they just cannot happen for the reasons stated in the moratorium, um, which if I can condense down um, to overly simplify, it would be for non-payment of rent. Um, but there are other reasons that evictions can still occur and, and do still occur. Okay. Um, and it, it, to continue and answer your question about what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of folks, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, with respect to evictions, we're seeing a lot of folks who are being evicted for um, what, what's called sort of a non-renewal, right? So this is someone whose uh, lease term is up. Um, either their month-to-month -month agreement or the end of their lease, um, be it for a, a number of months or a year or more. At the end of their lease, a lot of um, lessors are non-renewing these renters. And that is leading um, people into distress because it's very hard to go look for apartments and move um, in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, in addition to you know, seeing the regular number of issues with security deposits upon move out and conditions of habitability and things like that. Right. Can you, um, can you uh, touch on, I think Tristan had mentioned that there is some assistance for paying rent for, um, Tenants, is that, do you know anything about the assistance that's available for tenants? So, um, right, uh, there's been a number of assistance packages. Um, so the, through the CARES Act funding, originally um, money was dedicated um, uh, to the states, which was then allocated out. Um, uh, Dane County has also allocated money um, uh, for rental assistance. Um, and now with the new CARES Act, there's going to be a new allotment of money being made available to the states um, for uh, further rental assistance. So that, that will be um, available um, to individuals to, uh, to request and, and fill out necessary sort of paperwork. And then the money uh, actually ends up going to the, the property owners so long as they're working with renters. And unfortunately, we have heard from some renters um, who have indicated that um, the, the, the property owners don't wanna work with them uh, to access those funds. Um, that would, that's sort of a shocking surprise because it's, you know, it's, there's, there's money there where there otherwise wouldn't be. Um, uh, so you would think that everybody would wanna take advantage of that and work together um, to, to sort of fill out the necessary paperwork and get that um, uh, assistance in so that um, uh, people can stay in their homes and also so that, uh, that lessors can get paid. Great, thanks for that information. Um, so, Professor, you also um, you you were also an author. Uh, I wanted to mention on the uh, recently released uh, landlord tenant uh, manual published by the State Bar of Wisconsin. Can you give uh, the the watchers, the viewers, a sense of what that book and and your uh, your you know what you focused on in the book and how it can help them? Yeah, I'm very excited about this. It has been a project that has been a few years in the making. I've had to uh, uh, um, apologize for overhyping this earlier. I thought it would be out uh, a couple of years ago. 
Um, but the state bar, the pinnacle division there has worked with a number of um, rental housing attorneys um, to publish uh, a book. I'm not sure if it's coming in, in as a binder um, in one of those um, wonderfully uh, sort of soft covered binders that the state bar does so well. Um, but it will be a treatise, a practice focused treatise and, and the state bar is um, is, is fantastic about um, the publication of those materials, things like the judicial bench book, the civil procedure before trial, damages, discovery, etc. There are a load of wonderful manuals that the State Bar publishes. Um, however, there wasn't one on rental housing law until now. And now there is going to be one. It's coming out. You can pre-order it now, is my understanding, through the State Bar's website. Um, and again, it's authored by myself and a number of other rental housing lawyers, both lawyers who practice primarily for um, lessors and uh, um, rental housing um, folks that practice primor primarily for lessees. Um, so you've got um, a lot of perspective in it. Um, I authored a couple of chapters. One was on um, maintenance obligations. Again, so talking about conditions of habitability, which is a, an ongoing concern even during the pandemic and, and certainly when even when there's not. And then also some, uh, I think I also had the miscellaneous chapter in there as well. So, uh, and then helped comment. We all um, all chipped in and helped comment and review each other's sections. So it should be a, a wonderful resource. Um, the rental housing law in Wisconsin has changed quite a lot in the last few years. I believe there were five different bills passed by the state house um, and uh, changes by the um, Department of Ag Trade and Consumer Protection to the primary statutes and, and administrative regulations um, that deal with rental housing uh, on a residential level. So um, uh, the State Bar not only publishes great resources, but also does a really good job keeping them up to date. So I suspect that if you purchase this, you'll, you'll want to subscribe to the updates because there's likely to be some as this area continues to evolve. Right, right. And as it continues to evolve, I, so I just wanted to ask you a kind of a final question here. When, when the eviction moratoriums do lift, do you suspect or expect that there will be an influx of evictions filed? Uh, yes, I mean, no one has a crystal ball um, and, and I hope to be wrong, um, but uh, there, there will obviously be um, a number of, uh, of additional evictions, um, certainly relative to what we um, have right now during the moratorium. It just, uh, just uh, is, 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 is to be expected that there will be uh, additional um, evictions filed. And again, it's unfortunate people should be working with one another, um, uh, both um, lessors and lessees in order to um, stabilize the housing market, um, get as much um, uh, you know, money paid as possible um, uh, and feasible and work together to actually lobby for further rental assistance. Um, Lessors and lessees are, are like a business and customers. Uh, the business can't exist if the customers aren't coming and aren't paying. Um, so rather than seeing it as an adversarial situation, um, lessors and lessees need to work together to sustain the rental housing market. UW Law Professor Mitch, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely, thanks for your time.